Hi everybody, welcome to Byte Ventures, where we deep dive into the marvels of technology. In today's case study, we'll discuss about the ingenious image management of Uber Eats, how they were serving so much more images at the scale of millions of images every hour uh, with less storage and less cost. Let's deep dive into it. So first thing that comes to mind is like why image is such a big concern, right? Okay, let's take a step back uh, and think as a consumer. So when we are buying some things, the first tangible metrics that we have is like, is the product looking good for me to buy it? And then only we make a decision that, okay, this is something that I want to invest in. It's like uh, awareness to desires, right? First we get aware that, okay, this is looking pretty good. And then we convert into a desire and then we go for, go for it. So that is the first market. So when we have this, then we'll say that, okay, this is something pretty interesting as visualization. As more and more customer uh, focus on visualization, then the merchants that are getting onboarded onto the platform of Uber Eats will now take it as a huge uh, metrics that, okay, I need to have good, good images, right? Or better images in that case. And as the business will expand, as more stores get added, for example, there are two stores that are getting added uh, who wants to have a Coke, right? So they want to have a very attractive Coke picture so that people who are looking into it will see that, okay, this is something I want to buy in and they'll select that store. So with the business expansion, the number of images that are getting stored in the Uber Eats server will increase, uh, thus increasing the cost, the CDN cost, the storage cost and everything. That is why it is a very important problem to optimize the images that are being stored in Uber Eats. Okay, let's talk about what exactly an image service would look like. So image service would something be like a black box, right? So it is like, okay, given an image URL. So if some merchant want to update an item or they want to add to their inventory, they'll give like, okay, this is the image URL. I want to uh, use it for the people who want to buy this. And this is something I will use for that. Then as soon as they give the image URL, the image service, which is considered as a black box for now, takes the image, downloads it, fits into proper specification that is required by the app or the other device metrics that we have, and then spits out the processed image URL or image itself, right? So it looks something like this. So the merchant gives the image URL, the dotted line is the image service. It downloads the image, processes the image, stores, and it gives out the processed image URL, right? So when uh, the Uber Eats platform was originally having the first image service or the V1 version, the catalog system was one of the system that was making a high use of that. The catalog system was providing full menu on each upload. So whenever there was a single upload, the catalog was showing up the full menu, which was wasting a lot of time because it is reprocessing all of the images, re-downloading all of the images, restoring all of the images whenever there is a single upload or update to any of the images, right? So. In this regard, the team decided that why don't we keep it only to update the image when someone updates the image URL only, because that's when we'll make a call that, okay, this user is interested in updating this image and that is why he's giving us a new URL and we'll do the same thing. That was a good step because that helped them save ton of money because they saved a lot of compute, a lot of storage because they didn't reprocess all of the images uh, which were just lying there before, right? But here, is some problem the, the thing is like it was only introduced for the same vendor that means if i am vendor a and there is another vendor b who is inputting the same image it will not be applying to that because he had a different system for that altogether right not only this there were two other bigger problems the first problem that was very important to solve was reusability the vendors or the people who are using that were not able to reuse any of the older images. For example, for a Coke can, I already used an image uh, URL for a Coke can, but I want to reuse this for probably another drink, um, which is pretty close to Coke, uh, pretty has a very high brand recognition or something like that. But there was no such possibility because there were no such interfaces for the people. The second thing was there was no updation of the image, so as in when the url was the same but the image internally was updated as we have stored the image there was no way to have the updated image with the same url as well these are the pretty big problem statements uh, for the uber eats team so that's when they th thinking about like okay let's do something let's update the service and upgrade the service and fix some of the pain point okay 
let's think about this so whenever there is a problem that comes in and which involves some kind of storage i was like okay this should map to this this should map to this what exactly comes to your mind hash map right that's exactly what uber eats team did so what that is like they had multiple hash maps to kind of optimize the whole operations they introduced three hash maps one is called the url map one is called the original image map and one is called the processed image map let's dive deep in uh, so the first thing is the URL map. So what exactly was the key value pair? As everyone will be aware, uh, a map or a hash map will have, uh, I'm turning, uh, I'm talking about hash map, but it might be a different implementation, but it's internally a dictionary or a map structure, right? Which had a key value pair. So the URL map uh, took the image URL and it stored the hash of the map, uh, hash of the image, sorry, as the value of the map, right? The second thing that we discussed was like processed image map. So what exactly processed image map did is like it took the hash of the image that got spit out from the first URL map and then it stored some kind of processing specification or processing specs and it stored the processed image as the value. Someone might claim that, okay, this might be a URL, but yeah, this depends on the exact implementation of how the team did it. It can be image, it can be image URL. Uh, doesn't make much of a difference though. Uh, the third thing is the original image map, right? The original image map is like storing the hash of the image and giving out the image. The hash of the image is the key in this case. Uh, the image is the value in this case, right? So what will be the processing specification in this case? Now that we have three map, how they're going to use it. Okay, let's discuss about the processing specs. So the processing specs will be something uh, which specified the input requirements like the file format. Will it be JPEG or GIF or PNG or stuff? What is the image size of the input? Um, like, is it less than 10 KB, more than one MB on all stuff? What is the aspect ratio, right? The second thing that was very prominent in a processing specs was the output format is the exact same thing that we just discussed and the size of the output, like how big we want the output to be. Like, is it within 100 KB or one KB or whatever it is, right? Okay, so let's just think about how this three maps stitched together. That means when an image URL comes in, how these three maps play a very important or pivotal role in giving out the processed image URL. The system looks something like this. So first uh, we have the processed uh, new image URL. So this is the image URL that needs to be processed. And this was fed to the system. The dotted lines, uh, the two dotted lines in this case are the image service V2 in this case. Okay. So the first diamond that we see here uh, is the url map so we check that the image url that we received is present in any of the uh sorry in in the url map or not right so if that is present then it's pretty easy case then we just read the hash of the image uh, because if we do a get on this map we'll get the hash of this image right but what if if it is no that means this image url that we are giving is a pretty brand new image that People haven't seen it yet, right? Or the system hasn't seen it yet. So when it is no, so it's download the image and it gets the hash. Uh, so download the image, compute the hash, and it updates both of the hash map. Uh, the first is the URL hash map, and the second thing is the one we'll discuss it later, right? Which is called the original image map. So when it has the hash, it is completed uh, from the image download phase, right? That means uh, the image download phase is done now. So it moves to the image processing phase now. So what happens? So once we have the hash, so by this point, we'll have the hash of the image. Then we'll see that, okay, this is the exact specification that I want to have, right? So with with the search query that they're performing, they will optimize the search query so that everything is organized, everything is formatted in proper structure and the query, the hash map uh, named processed image map. If uh, the hash and the processing specification is present, then they will say, okay, we have the processed map already. So we'll just spit out that uh, directly from here. If uh, the processing spec included with the hash map is not present, they will do another diamond check here. What exactly is the diamond check? The diamond check is this check here that I'm talking about. So they will check that whether the image is already downloaded or not. If the image is downloaded, then we have the hash already, right? If it follows the yes path, then we have the hash. Uh, then we just process the image, then update the processed image map only in this case, right? When we're talking about download, we are checking about downloaded into the system or not. 
but here the download image is a different thing it is downloading from the external service to the internal system so if it is not downloaded we did the image from the original map so the original map stores uh the map uh the hash of the image to the original image that we have right so as we discussed in the last slide the original image map stores the hash of the image and the actual image so here if we don't have uh the image downloaded into our old system but we have the hash because we are in this step right this has a hash already we'll use the hash query the original image map to get the image and then after getting the image we'll do the same processing of the image and storing it and then giving out the image url okay that is the whole journey so getting uh, the image url and spitting out the processed image url is the whole journey of the image service v2 pretty interesting couple of interesting points um, so the image um, is stored as blob here and the three maps that is url map processed image map and the original image map were stored in something called as blob storage system it is very equivalent to Amazon S3 is kind of a storage system. And the second thing is like all the blob metadata were stored in something called as doc store. The so doc store is Uber's in-house distributed SQL platform that they have built, uh, which is very interesting. Probably I'll cover it on some other time, but the metadata that this map had uh, was getting stored in the doc store. Okay, let's talk about the problems that we had. Um, there was a problem of reusability that no one was able to reuse the older images. And the second was the updation, images, uh, updation of images was not possible uh, when the URL was still the same. Think about this. Is this problem solved? I think it does, right? Um, we can have the URLs in the URL map, get the hash, and feed the hash to the original image and get back the image. That means we have a complete loop there. That means we can directly use the URL to image. So if we have the URL, then we can say that we can reuse the image altogether. So this problem is solved more or less, right? But the second thing is like the updation of the image. What if the source image that we got the URL from got updated, but as we have downloaded it in our own system, there is no way that we'll be able to get the updated image from the source. So that is a still a big problem, uh, which needs to be addressed. And that is when the Uber team came up with something called as V3. What exactly will do V3? So think about this. So V3 will have all the services of V2. We'll have some additional stuff that will help us removing the older images um, when, it, when it passes a certain time. Details, right? So this is what clicks to the mind. So time to live is something which we have come in cache uh, where uh, after some time is passed, that item is kicked out of the memory, kicked out of cookies and all stuff. That is called time to live or TTL. So when we have this, then we can say that if we can use this to store the image format, then we can leverage this to solve this problem as well. Let's see how it works. So. This is the exact system, right? So we have the process URL or the URL that needs to be processed. Uh, we asked the diamond URL map here that whether uh, this URL is there or not. If it is not there, it is a brand new one. So this is a pretty happy path we're not concerned about, right? Because if it is not there, it will download, uh, get the hash and update the URL map and the original image map. It will do the stuff and it will return the processed hash map, uh, uh, processed image and all stuff. We're not concerned about that. The interesting part is this one. What if it is already present in the hash map? If it is already present in the hash map, so we're talking about that we store something called as the last modified or time to live for this one. It's called last modified in better way. That would make some context in this case, right? So as this would be a HTTP request, this will have some headers and this HTTP header will have the last modified value as part of that as well. And in the map, we have stored the last modified value uh, of the image uh, that was inputted, right? So what will be the problem? So we can take some buffers. We'd say that, okay, if the last modified in the header that is coming is greater than the last modified present in the URL map, then we can see that the image is stale now, right? And that means the image needs to be replaced. And that is when we'll follow this route. That means we'll download the image from the source. As we download image from the source, this will capture the updated information present in the source in that case, right? And that will help us to get 
all of the updations that happen to the image without the change of the URL. And this is the regular path that will follow. It will get updated in the processed image map, um, spit out the processed image URL and all stuff. So this is how they dealt with both of the problems in a very important manner. The team claims that they have done this in two months and that is pretty incredible with having such huge systems uh, building in. And that's all for today, guys. Uh, I hope you liked the video uh, about how Uber Eats stores the images in very efficient format and they have cut down the cost of the CDN, of their storage servers and all stuff. Let me know if you have any questions and if you like the video, uh, please smash the like button. Uh, I'll see you in the next one.